What are some times you thought you were going to die? My family and I were vacationing in my home province when I was about seven or eight. We, all but my mom who can't swim, packed a picnic and headed down to the lake. We loaded everything into our canoe, my father making sure my water wings were securely in place. I had already taken some swimming lessons and had proven I was accomplished enough to only need these little flotation devices. My sister, who is three years older than me and a confident swimmer, hopped in the front of the canoe with her paddle, me in the middle, and my dad in the back, taking charge of the steering and really most of the paddling, lol. We set off from the beach and paddled for a while. We found a nice spot on the lake that had a little island with its own beach and a wharf nearby. And so, we decided to have our picnic on it. We get out, and while my dad secures the canoe to the wharf, my sister and I got ourselves comfortable, ready to eat our sandwiches and carrot sticks. We're all sitting down, unwrapping our sandwiches, ready to dive in, when a big gust of wind rushes by and whips the piece of plastic wrap that was around my sandwich right out of my hand and into the lake. The little environmentalist I was even back then doesn't think twice and leaps into the water. Who wants to be a litter bug, right? Now, I should mention that while my sister and I were getting ourselves comfortable on the wharf, I shed my water wings. My life preserver, though, I didn't know then how much I needed to rely on them. I'm now flailing in the water. My sister and father not realizing at first that I no longer had my floaties on. Once my sister does, she leaps in after me. Thank goodness, right? Wrong. I'm so terrified, kicking, trying to stay above the surface that she can't grab a hold of me. She starts to go under a bit too, but she is close enough to the wharf that only she can grab on so she doesn't get pulled under along with me. My father, seeing that she can't help me, is in full panic mode and hops in. Now, one last thing I should mention. My father is an amputee. His leg was amputated when he was a young boy. He had a rare type of bone cancer. He sometimes uses an artificial leg, but when he was at home or on vacation, he would use crutches to get around. So now all three of us are in the water, but my dad can't grab a hold of me with both hands while keeping himself above water. I don't remember much after that. What I do remember is waking up in a warm bed with clean sheets, dry clothing, but my hair was still damp. I don't know how many years later, I find out that a nurse was on the beach that day and witnessed the whole thing. She swam out when she saw my family trying to come to my rescue but without success. There was even an article in the local paper, I've never met this heroic woman but now, as I write this, I want to dig up that old article and reach out to her and tell her that I conquered my fear of water. I learned how to swim, paddled competitively, even won medals for racing, and that nothing actually brings me more joy than being near or in the water. So that's my story. TL, DR. My father and sister tried unsuccessfully to save me from drowning when I was a kid. Thankfully, there was a nurse on a nearby beach who swooped in to the rescue and saved my life. I got MRSA after surgery about a decade ago. The antibiotics were blowing my veins every 12 hours or so, and they were running out of places to stick the IVs. It was so messed up. I only remember bits and pieces of time during my three weeks in the hospital and still missed chunks of times after I got out. I wasn't fully recovered for about six months. I definitely thought I could die. I have astigmatism in one eye plus very poor eyesight. I do wear glasses to help with the poor vision, but it doesn't fix my stigma. Therefore, I can't see at night because of headlights. By chance, I had to drive on the highway this night, and I couldn't see and had to switch lanes. I was going really slow for the highway, probably like 45 miles per hour, and I thought it was safe and there weren't any cars in the lane I was switching to. Turns out, I cut off a semi who was going the actual speed limit. He slammed on his brakes and flashed his lights on me. His brakes were so loud I could hear them behind me and I immediately knew I fucked up. Luckily for me, he was an experienced truck driver and knew how to handle situations like this. He never hit my car, but it was a really close call. Had he not knew what he was doing, he would have flattened me and my car out in an instant. I was in the hospital for a rather bad allergic reaction to a prescribed medication. I somehow managed to get tangled in all of the wires connected to me and pulled part of the IV out. Blood was gushing from my arm and the nurse call button won't work. I was still tethered to the other machines that kept me from leaving my room. The best I could do was open the door that I was barely able to reach and call for help. Nobody came for what seemed to be an eternity, so I sat back on the edge of my bed trying to put pressure on the wound but still bleeding profusely, thinking I was a goner. 
I had pictures of my kids on my cell phone case, so I stared at that as I embraced the inevitable. Thankfully, a couple of nurses came in to what they described as a murder scene and calmly patched me up. Their calm demeanor made all the difference, and I realized that I wasn't done for after all. Used to own a convertible. Had just got my car out of the shop less than an hour before some a-hole ran a red light and clipped the front of my car. It spun me around, causing the person behind me to T-bone me. As I started flipping over in the middle of the intersection, I had the real, serene, calm moment of, well, this is it. It was very strange, because I thought I was going to die, but I wasn't scared. Ended up a little bruised, sitting on the side of the car, as the a-hole that hit me stopped. Got out of his car, and looked over to see if I was alive, then drove off. I was asleep and dreaming. In my dream, I saw a really old train casually driving through a typical western movie landscape while continuously speeding up. My heart rate sped up with the train for whatever reason to the point it was pounding so loud I thought I'm having a heart attack. When I woke up, my heart rate began to slow down again, but I was only 10 and really thought I was going to die. Flew in a plane from Hawaii to California and we were in really bad turbulence for a full three hours. I thought we were going to die. The movie Big was my sanity rock at that point. It was the only one of the in-flight movie options that I had seen, so I just watched it on a loop to try to take my mind off of the terrifying turbulence. Haven't gotten on a plane since. It happened three days ago. My friends and I were driving in a car, pulling a motorcycle trailer. My one friend was driving and the other on his phone in the passenger seat. I had my seatbelt off and was poking my head up front for a better view of where we were going. We're driving on a two-way road out in the country and it's a super long and straight road. We keep driving and get behind some guy going five under the speed limit. My friend decides to pass him before a hill and crosses the yellow line. We speed up to pass him and just then, another car pops over the hill. Now we're on the left side of the road, neck to neck with the car we were passing and there's a car heading straight for us. My dumbass friend decides we should speed up instead of braking. He speeds past the car we were passing and then swerved in front of him. We missed the other car by a couple of feet. This may sound bad now, but it gets worse. We were going 60 fucking miles per hour. I'm lucky to be alive. At the time, I didn't think anything of it, but looking back, it was an elementary school and the fire alarm goes off. We figured it was a random drill, so the teachers line us up and we exit the school. We see some of the teachers panicking and pointing up. A tornado funnel cloud is just floating over the school. It ended up landing a few blocks away and hit the apartment complex that we lived in. My stepdad said it sounded like a train coming through. Didn't do much damage, just uprooted the fence around the pool and knocked down the wall where the dumpsters were kept. But that could have been bad with the entire elementary school outside. I had taken a trip to Copper Mountain with a friend of mine many years ago. I was a more confident and experienced snowboarder than he was and he did not want to go with me into the slack country lift accessible backcountry. I made the foolish decision to go by myself and was having an amazing time in the fresh snow. I did not know the terrain at all and ended up somewhere I should not have been and fell off a cliff. I remember flying through the air and then when I came to, I would smashed my helmet and torn my jacket and couldn't move. I had probably suffered a concussion and couldn't move my legs. I couldn't get to my cell phone and thought I was going to die. I'm not sure how long I played there for but within an hour, two people came across me. They could see me from their cheerlift and saw that I was going towards a particularly dangerous path. By this point, I realized I was able to move my legs and they led me down to safety. I'm not that stupid anymore and I'm very grateful I was not paralyzed or worse on that day. Twice I thought I was going to drown. Once at a man-made lake while at summer camp, it was concrete on the bottom up until a certain point, then it became sand. The tiny drop between concrete and sand was enough to put me under. Someone pulled me back, looked around and didn't see anyone around me, so that made it weirder. Second time was at Plum Island, there with my dad, stepmom and half-brother. I was in the water up to my knees, but there had been a big storm a day prior. Wave came in, knocked me down and the rip pulled me out. Dad came running in and pulled me out by the hair. Better than drowning, honestly. I was sea swimming in Nicaragua and didn't notice the steady drift down the beach as I was having fun in the high waves. Then I looked toward the beach and saw a lot of rocks between me and it. Next wave was going to dash me against them pretty hard, so I scrambled to get on top of them before it hit. 
Somehow I was able to get on top before the next wave threw me over. Scraped my leg pretty bad, but managed to get back to land. Definitely had a this is how it ends moment. I was left unattended in a wave pool. There were no lifeguards on duty and the other swimmer didn't really notice or give a shit. I thought I was going to die then. A few months ago, my skateboard fell into the ocean while skating on a path that was about 8 to 10 meters above the water. The waves were strong, but my skateboard was expensive, so I went to go retrieve it. Ended up getting bashed against the rocks and the seawall a few times, and I thought I might die. Luckily, I managed to find it after staying in the water for a few minutes. I almost fell off of a mountain. When I was in college, I took a mountaineering class in which we took several weekend trips to climb mountains. During one of those trips, we were near the summit of one, but we had to cross over a section that went around a sharp corner. Think of it like a wide wedge of cake sitting on the edge of a table, but the table is angled down 15 to 20 degrees. The table extended about 15 feet from the point before it ended in a sheer cliff. We had to walk or climb across that table, around the point of the corner, and up the other side. We were tied together in rope teams of three people each, and I was in the middle. The first guy crossed successfully. When I went, as I was crossing, I was holding on to the point of rock when the section I was holding onto broke off. I fell onto my back with this chunk of rock still in my hands, and I started to slide toward the edge, where a 100-foot fall awaited me. I tossed the rock off my chest and rolled over and tried to stop myself from sliding, but it did not work and just cut up my hands. When I had slid to within a few feet of the edge, the rope caught me. Luckily for me, the other guys on my rope team did what they were supposed to do and caught me. I still have a fear of heights that I got from that incident. When I was a kid, like 13 to 14, I was climbing in a red sandstone quarry, probably 60 to 70 feet off of a shallow lake. I climbed onto this ledge. As I took my foot off the previous ledge, it fell and crumbled into the lake. I was stuck, 60-ish feet up with no phone, no one around for a good couple miles. Parents would come looking for at least 12 hours, and they had no idea where I was. I was there for two hours holding on, couldn't go up and couldn't go down. I cried, had no idea what to do, thought I was going to slip and die. Got very, very lucky, and a random dog walker was in the quarry for whatever reason, saw me and got a rope and I got out. Thanked the guy and we both shouldn't have been in the quarry. Got home and thanked my lucky stars. When I got into a motorcycle wreck, the front forks snapped and both me and the bike went tumbling down the road. It landed on my head and body several times. I was scared, either the bike would kill me or the person driving right behind me would run me over. Thankfully, he slammed on his brakes and I was wearing a helmet. It was a Honda 1100 Blackbird Superbike, a very heavy girl indeed. My left arm has never really recovered, but surprisingly I didn't break a single bone. How? I have no idea. The bike sustained snapped forks, a crushed radiator, crushed headpipes, bent rim, entire front end destruction, the bracket holding the exhaust pure metal snapped in half and even the top of the tail was ruined because it flipped upside down as well. When most people saw it in the bed of our truck after that, they asked if the rider survived, and I happily chimed in, I'm right here. I had to have emergency surgery for an ectopic pregnancy six years ago. I've never had any major surgery prior to that day in my life, and going in, I was very anxious over the small possibility that something could go awry and I could die. As the anesthesiologist was putting me under, I really thought it could be the end. When I crashed into an oncoming vehicle, I don't remember much of the crash, but I remember smoke inside the car. It was the airbag that had exploded. I remember trying to open the driver's side door, but couldn't. My arms were numb. I thought I broke it. Luckily, there was another car driving behind me that called 112, the 911 where I live, and that was the longest ride to my hospital I'd ever been on. I was in shock and my legs were shaking like crazy because of it. Came out with nothing but some glass splinters in my head and a very bruised arm and the word back pain I've ever felt. They thought I broke it in the ambulance, so I went through one of those x-ray tunnels, can't remember what they're called. Luckily, my car was built like a tank, but was a complete wreck afterwards. The other guy I crashed into survived, also with just a hurt hand. Didn't go to the hospital until the day after.